Lieutenant Frank Luke Jr. was an American fighter pilot who served during the First World War. With a confirmed 18 aerial victories, he was the second ranked flying ace in the United States Army Air Service. Luke was one of the most daring pilots to see service during the war, and although his time in the air was brief, his valor and willingness to take on the most dangerous of missions earned him his legendary status as the Arizona Balloon Buster. Luke was born on May 19, 1897 in the city of Phoenix in what was then the Arizona Territory. It would be an additional 15 years before Arizona was admitted to the Union as the 48th state. He was born to a German immigrant family bearing the name of his father, Frank Luke Sr. He came from a long line of military service, with family members having served on the frontier during the American Civil War. Luke Sr. had tried to get into West Point as a younger man, but was denied on the account of his poor eyesight. Luke Jr. was the fifth child of nine brothers and sisters, but even as a child he had a penchant for sticking out in a crowd. He was loud, energetic, talkative, brash, and a compulsive collector. One night, Luke Sr. went out to the family barn and found 15 metal cans tucked away in the rafters. Each one had a live tarantula inside of it. When his father demanded to know who was responsible, Luke Jr. fessed up and admitted that he had been collecting them. He wanted to catch a hundred in total. Luke grew up in a rapidly changing Phoenix. This last vestige of the Wild West was being tamed. The streets were being paved. Automobiles began to putter through the city. Electric lamps began to light the streets and inside the homes. The Luke family even got themselves a telephone. He was a rough and tumble young boy all throughout his childhood and teenage years. His father bought him a rifle at the age of 12 and he frequently would go out shooting unsupervised. In high school, he was very popular with the girls and found himself developing a reputation as a prankster and by the accounts of many teachers and adults, a real troublemaker. He developed as an athlete, he rode horses and was known to go camping for days at a time in the harsh Arizona wilderness. During one such camping trip, Luke risked his own life to save his best friend who got swept away while trying to cross a turbulent river. As a young man, he worked some of the state's silver and copper mines, doing backbreaking work through the summers. In the mining town of Ajo, Arizona, he helped found the dance hall to make money off the local miners who sought dance lessons with the hope that they might find wives. There, he also developed a taste for bare knuckle boxing, both as a pastime and as a way to part miners from their money. After the death of his business partner in 1917, Luke set out to find his new path. Meanwhile, the war in Europe raged on and had no signs of stopping. In January of that year, the British government intercepted a message from Germany. In what would become known as the Zimmerman Telegram, Germany had made a secret proposition to Mexico. That, should the United States enter the war, Mexico should strike against the U.S. and reclaim their lands lost during the Mexican-American War. Many across the American border states were incensed by the news of this message and took it as a direct threat to their home states. A fervor of military enlistment spread across the Southwest as it had seemed like the U.S. was preparing to go to war. Alongside many of his brothers and a sister who joined the Red Cross, Luke made the journey south and enlisted in Tucson, Arizona. Frank Luke would be going to war. With the looming war, the United States saw the growing importance of having a suitable air force. Investments were placed in aircraft and military aviation technology to update the outdated American planes. Pilot schools sprung up across the country. During the First World War, aviation was incredibly dangerous. Their planes provided almost no protection and were so fragile they could literally be flown apart if maneuvered too erratically. Early planes were also very imperfect technology. They were temperamental and required intense focus and multitasking ability to even keep flying. Doing all of these tasks while under fire from the enemy made being a pilot one of the most dangerous jobs in the world. Not to mention, the pilots were not issued parachutes. The government did not want pilots bailing out and costing them the price of a new plane. In 1918, the average life expectancy of a new pilot was a mere three weeks, and Frank Luke Jr. was determined to be one. He wrote letters and managed to make his way into pilot school by using a boldness that he had become known for. He took to the task with impeccable focus and in a program where three quarters of the prospective pilots failed, he was determined to succeed. He was so determined, he was able to complete his nine week training program in just seven. He quickly became a skilled pilot, but often pushed himself and his craft to the absolute limits. He was known for pulling off very dangerous stunts and on several occasions was saved by his skill and a fair share of good luck. 
During his time training, Luke met a young woman in San Diego, California named Mary Rapson, whom he would fall madly in love with. Only a month after their first meeting, he asked her to marry him. She accepted and the two planned to be wed after the return from the war. In January of 1918, he was ordered to France to complete his training. He made the crossing from New York City aboard the USS Leviathan. After completing his last training, Luke and his fellow graduates were put into the pool of available pilots. There, he forged a close friendship with his fellow pilot, Joseph Vayner, a man who would become his most trusted wingman. His unit was young and inexperienced, but they would soon become veterans at the cost of many lives. After the deaths of many of their best in a particular bloody excursion, Luke would finally be given a chance to prove himself in the aerial combat. Upon arriving at his new station in the 27th Aero Squadron, the American Eagles, under the direct command of Major Hartney, he immediately rubbed his new squad mates the wrong way. He was brash and boastful, but to Frank, he was merely stating the facts. What irritated his squad mates more was he often lived up to these boasts. During an early excursion, Luke reported engine trouble that forced him to break formation and fly on his own. Although a reasonable excuse to break rank, it would become one that Luke was known for, cementing his reputation as Flying Lone Wolf. At the time, many of his fellow pilots believed him a coward, using engine difficulties as an excuse to avoid potential battles. But in retrospect, their tunes changed. They would eventually realize that he wasn't breaking rank to avoid battles, he was doing it so he could get into them and fight alone. Luke flew the iconic SPAD-13, a French-designed biplane that was the aircraft of choice for the United States Army Air Service. The SPAD was a canvas-covered, wood-framed aircraft that housed a single seat, a Hispana Suiza 220 horsepower engine, two forward-facing machine guns, and 400 rounds of ammunition. It could reach altitudes up to 22,300 feet or 6,800 meters, and it reached speeds of up to 131 miles an hour or 211 kilometers an hour. Over 8,000 of these fighters were produced and were used to equip 15 of the 16 American Pursuit Squadrons. Many of the most famous Allied aces flew this airplane, including the United States' most successful pilot, Eddie Rickenbacker. Luke and his friend Vayner, eager for action in limelight, frequently volunteered themselves to fly the dangerous missions of attacking German observation balloons. These balloons had a soft fabric body without any internal structure. Hanging below it was a wicker basket that housed a single soldier. Hoisted thousands of feet into the air, soldiers would communicate to the ground using a built-in phone line. This allowed them to give instant updates on enemy troop movements and adjust bearings for artillery barrages. This was before air-to-ground radios became the norm. In order to achieve lift inexpensively, these balloons were filled with lighter-than-air hydrogen gas. This also made them very flammable. Regular machine gun bullets were ineffective as they would only poke small holes that would send the balloons slowly drifting to the ground. These holes could easily be repaired after landing and the balloons redeployed soon after. In response, balloon busters employed incendiary rounds that would ignite the highly flammable gas. These balloons may seem like easy targets, but really, they were some of the most dangerous. These pilots had to move in exceptionally close to their targets in order to reliably set them aflame. Meanwhile, on the ground, balloons were heavily guarded by machine gun and anti-aircraft batteries, as well as enemy aircraft assigned to protect the balloons. Then, if the pilots could avoid all these obstacles, they would have to avoid the massive explosion that comes with igniting a bag filled with hydrogen gas. Balloon busting was one of the most dangerous jobs that a pilot could perform, so naturally, Frank Luke loved to do it. Even against the orders of his superiors, Luke and Vayner made a habit of breaking off on their own to engage the enemy. The two made a very effective team, with Luke going after the balloons and Vayner providing him support fire. Between September 12th and 29th, Luke was accredited with shooting down 14 German balloons and an additional four airplanes. These 18 air victories were achieved in 10 engagements across just 8 days. No other World War I pilot would achieve such a feat. On September 18th, tragedy would strike. During a balloon busting mission, Luke's best friend Vayner was shot down by German ace George von Hentelmann, flying a Fokker D7 while in pursuit of Luke. Luke was able to shoot down two D7s and carry out his balloon busting mission. Luke grew despondent after his friend's death. He took even greater risks during his missions and heeded the words of his commanding officers even less. Captain Alfred Grant once said when asked what he was going to do with Luke, I'm going to recommend him for a distinguished service cross, then by God I'm going to court-martial him. 
On September 28, 1918, Luke decided not to fly back to his home base and landed his signature SPAD-13 at a French aerodrome where he would spend the night. He was confronted by Captain Grant who grounded him and threatened to have him court-martialed for absence without leave. Despite this, Luke took off the next morning without authorization and flew towards the front. His supervisor, Major Hartney, was sympathetic to him and called off his arrest. Luke advanced and dropped a message to a nearby balloon company asking that they observe his attack. He managed to shoot down his target, three German balloons, but was struck in the left shoulder by a single machine gun bullet. He managed to land his plane safely in a nearby field, trying to avoid nearby German patrols. He pushed forward towards the nearby stream before his wounds proved too much. He collapsed to the ground approximately 200 meters from his plane. As German infantry approached, Luke drew his pistol and fired at the approaching enemy with his dying breaths. Frank Luke died on September 29, 1918, one year to the day of his initial report for duty. On September 30th, Luke was buried by the Germans in Marvaux Cemetery, where he was retrieved two months later by American forces. He now lies in the Meuse-Argonne American Cemetery and Memorial. For his bravery and aerial prowess, Frank Luke Jr. was posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor in 1919. The medal was presented to his father in Phoenix, Arizona. From the First World War, 121 men would receive their Medal of Honor, only four of whom were pilots. Now, his legacy is carried on in Phoenix, Arizona. A statue of Luke was erected in front of the Arizona Capitol Building in 1930. Perhaps more famously, however, is the U.S. Air Force training base, which bears his name, Luke Air Force Base. The base was built in 1941, where over 12,000 fighter pilots graduated to fight in World War II, earning in its nickname the Home of the Fighter Pilot. Luke Air Force Base would go on to be the primary training base for all F-16 fighter pilots until 2014, where it became the primary training base for the F-35 Lightning II. To this day, Luke trains the next generation of American airmen in the legacy of the Arizona balloon buster himself, Frank Luke Jr. Hi guys! Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. I know it's a little bit different than what you're used to seeing on this channel, but about a month ago I did a regular video and included a little five minute history on Thunderbird Field and got a huge response back from you guys, all saying that you liked the little history. So I thought I would add a little history segment to our channel. In no way, shape, or form is this going to interfere with the build videos, the preview videos, or any of the other videos that we do on this channel. This is just added content to, uh, for you guys to enjoy. So, if you guys enjoyed this video, please go ahead and hit that like button. And you can also leave a comment down below. And we are going to be doing a few more of these uh, history videos. So if there's a certain subject that you guys would like to see more about, please go ahead and leave it down in the comment section down below. And if we get enough people requesting one or two topics, we'll go ahead and make those videos as well. So I want to take this opportunity and thank you for watching. And please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming.